Hey everyone, this is Jason Long with Brainleaf, and today I'm going to show you how to put together an estimate for either a large project or a software as a service project. And remember, this is an estimate, not a full scope of work. This is the first thing that we generally give uh, customers or clients when they're asking how much is this thing going to cost. And over the years, we've put together a really thorough uh, spreadsheet that helps us break down every feature, every section, every subsection, everything that goes into it, and give a price range to start. And it's usually something we can do after the first meeting is completed, first or second, or sometimes third, it kind of depends. Uh, but after we have a good understanding of what goes into the system, but before we start working on the full information architecture and the full scope of work. And this helps the client understand if they want to go with us, if they don't want to go with us, if this project is too expensive, period. And it makes us look really, really good when we're doing these kinds of projects because we can put together this really in-depth thing that shows them not just what the build cost is going to be, but also what their operations costs are going to be. So let's take a look. Okay, so we're going to get started with just showing you where in the process we do all of this. This is our standard SaaS or large project build process. And the item we're going to be looking at is this one right here, this produce estimate item. So this takes a strategist, a salesperson, generally a project manager uh, to put together and we're going to list out all the features some of the pages, all of the major tasks, and we're gonna produce this round number estimate. And we're gonna do that with this SAS build uh, spreadsheet. So before we get into this overall cost page, let's get started by looking at the SAS, uh, the standard SAS system features. In this area, we start off with just looking at the general stuff that every single SaaS system needs. That's gonna include things like that project setup, pre-launch site checks and launch, architecture write-up, UX, design flows, revisions, design meetings, team kickoff, etc. And I would like to point out that within the UX, design flows, client revisions, etc., this can very often get way, way, way higher than 40 to 100 hours. This can be 500 hours, 600, 700, and up sometimes. It really just depends on what the project is, what goes into it, how big it is, et cetera. So if you take a look at this and you go, oh, that's really, you know, 100 hours, is that enough? Very often it is not enough. But in this particular project that we were scoping last using the spreadsheet, that was a reasonable amount for that. So in addition to the setup, we've got things like the login and logout, permissions management, admin panel build, dashboard, and the dashboard, by the way, is just what it takes to build the most basic version of that dashboard. The specific, the system specific features for that dashboard are listed in this other worksheet called system specific features, which I'll get to in just a moment. And then of course, every, almost every SaaS system is gonna need some billing systems. Uh, it's gonna need an onboarding process. And of course, email notifications. So often people forget about the email notifications and how much time that really takes. And while I'm talking about that, so often people forget about things like permissions management and admin panel build. This takes a really a long time sometimes. These are just the most basic, basic features we have listed here. But very often we need a lot more complex features than just these items. So going back to the standard transactional emails, these emails consist of things like the setup, account creation, payments and billing, notifications, alerts, subscriptions, et cetera, and all the emails that go into that. And then you have other things like a knowledge base. Almost every single uh, SaaS system is going to need some kind of knowledge base set up. And then finally, as you're going through and building this, we like to add in a percentage for just general mobile responsive changes. This, in this case, we've got 10% on this, but sometimes it can be 20% or more. It also depends on how the system is being built. So 
all of these things get added up to get our labor totals. And then we added a project management percentage, which is just 20% of all task related hours and a testing and debugging or quality assurance item, which is an additional 20% of all task related items. So what that means is we're going to take all the hours. You can see here, we've got some of this F2 through F96, which is all of this stuff here and all the way down to this area, this uh, cell, we're gonna sum all of that up and then we're gonna take a percentage of it. 20% of that amount is 53.02 and then 20% of this amount again, 53.02 and that's gonna give us a total uh, labor hours, minimum labor hours of 371. And you've probably already noticed that we've got this minimum hours, maximum hours and this average hours. What the way the reason we've got this is because you have items such as these value uh, pricing levels and value metric development. So this is uh, value metric is the thing that scales up, uh, the thing that in, um, changes the price as it goes up. This can be things like the number of seats, or the number of projects, or the number of times the database is hit, or a number of different things. Or so many, so many other things, and this can be so much work or so little work. If it's a matter of just the number of users, then it can be a really quick thing to do. If it's the number of projects and a bunch of other variables, it can be way more than 36 hours. Um, it really, really just depends on what's being done. But when we're going through this, we've had one or two or three conversations with the client at this point, and we've asked most of these questions. We really haven't delved in depth by this point into everything, but we've got a good idea. So very often what happens is this kind of question pops up and whoever's doing the, um, the estimate at this point doesn't have the answer. So they give it this big range and they add a note here and they say, hey, we need to talk to the client about this item. And they come back and then we, we work through, through every single line in this entire thing with the client before we get to a final price. So coming back down here, we've got our hours min, our hours max, our average, our notes. Uh, and also one of the thing on the notes here, these notes, are by the time we get done, we ha usually have a note on every single line. It really takes a while to write all those notes out, but it's so, so valuable to have. So this, as you can see, is just our san standard SAS features uh, worksheet. Now we're gonna go into this, a system specific features. And this was, uh, this was an old quote from another project. We've removed everything um, that had anything to do with the client. So we're just usually just throw this up here. Uh, and you can see here, that here's some of our notes from uh, system specific features. You can see here that the dashboard has been, in this case, it's a pipeline report and uh, it has a whole bunch of notes on what goes into that area for that dashboard. Uh, and then we've also got a bunch of client forms which are system specific here and tabular statistics. So this is a really, really small system we're looking at here. Just a few pages, really, a few features uh, in the system for whatever this SaaS system was. But very often, this system-specific features area can be really, really long, especially if you're putting together a full system scope and then you're going to, or full system estimate, and then you're going to cut it back and make a recommendation on a minimum viable product or MVP. So this will be super long very often, and it's all added up the same way we've got uh, everywhere else. I don't think I showed you how these uh, percentages are done. So this is percent, and we just do a sum times that percent. So here you can see the sum of these items times this percent equals 4.4, uh, and that gives us the mobile responsiveness on that, uh, which gets added to the total into here, and then we've got our percentages again here and here and our totals, and then we also do a plus and minus 20% over of all hours for each area so that people can see this is about the minimum and this is about the maximum. And when we go to take a look at the overall, you can see it's really, really a big difference. In this case, you can see minus 20% at uh, 54 hours on our minimum and our plus 20% maximum is gonna be 170. So that's a pretty big range, but now let's come over here and take a look. We've got some bigger ranges here. Yeah, here we go. So 
296 uh, versus 1,604. That's a huge range. But the advantage is that when we get done, we can say it's definitely not going to be less than 300 hours for this part, and it's almost definitely not going to be more than 1,604 hours. And the more information we get from these customers and these clients, the more we can narrow that range down, which is why it's so important to go through each item one by one. And what we, the way this usually works is we put this whole thing together and then we come back and we, we go through each, one, each thing and we tell them we're going to start out with this big range, but we're going to work with you to bring it down to have something that looks pretty good for you. So we've done uh, standard and then the system specific. And then we have a uh, standard website. This is just a real standard, um, real, real simple quote on a, um, uh, on a basic website. There we go. Um, and then we've got just design, development, quality assurance, content. This is a real, real basic thing. Sometimes we'll come back and put a much more advanced quote together for the marketing website. And then next, when people are doing a SaaS uh, system, we like to give them an estimate on what their actual ongoing costs are gonna look like. So not just the build cost of the thing, because while the build cost is very important, you got a lot of expenses you gotta take into consideration. So we've got our SaaS build and management costs. This is just like software, documentation, password vault, et cetera. But then you get marketing stuff and people want to know like, what is my marketing spend going to be? It's going to be a lot. If you're going to be doing a thousand bucks a month in ad spend or more, which most people are, uh, you know, you're really looking at 20 grand. That's, that's really actually very little money to spend on this, but it's a good place to start. And they have all this stuff where they can get a good idea of what they're looking at. And then we, uh, we have some of the business stuff and then all the personnel and just um, human capital. And you can see it adds up to be really quite a lot of money. And it's really important because a lot of people think that they're just gonna build the thing and then that's it and they're done. And when we get done looking, you know, showing them all of this, they can look and go, oh, oh, it's a lot of money. I didn't realize, um, I didn't realize it, that's what went into it. And all of this comes together in our overall cost area. So here we can see just our total average cost. We can see our minimum costs, our maximum costs. And then you can also see your plus minus 20% on each area here, initial monthly and yearly. So uh, like I said, what we do is we start off with just this bigger range with less questions answered. And then we go through and we go through each line with that customer and we bring that range down, and if that, or that, yeah, we bring, we narrow that range. If that range looks good to the client, then, and only then, do we start working after we have a contract or an engagement in place on the information architecture. Doing this, this piece of a project can take anywhere between an hour and say, I don't know, we usually don't spend more than about five hours on this, but it can take quite a bit of, quite a bit of team quite a bit of time so be careful how you're using your time on these things it's um, it's fine to if a customer doesn't look like they're really going to close it's fine to give a bigger range um, but for the most part we like to do it um, we like to put this together for all the people we talk to uh, it helps them run their businesses just as much as it helps us um, give them a quote on the project. And that's it. So in the next video, we'll talk a little bit more, actually in the next many videos, we're gonna talk more about uh, doing the information architecture and all the other steps that go into this gigantic process. Um, and right now, like I said, we're just right here at the estimate. Um, so I hope you guys find this helpful. Thank you so much. Let me turn my video back on. There we go. Thank you so much. And I'll talk to you soon.